Hi everyone, uh, my name is Chris, and I'm a UX designer at Ura Design, where my primary focus is on enhancing open source projects through UX design. Um, so I have a special emphasis on usability and accessibility, and today I want to share a little more about usability, what it is, why it's crucial for open source projects, its origins, and how to identify usability in issues in your own projects. So let's start with what usability is. Um, it's written up there. So it's the measure of how easily users can navigate through and accomplish tasks within a project. But what is it really? It's, it's a common term, and product designers use it a lot, UX designers, we throw it around all the time, but what does it actually mean? It's usable to whom? Who is using it? What's their level of experience? Sometimes the assessment of usability seems really subjective. We all know if something is usable or not, maybe more than others, uh, it's very, it's subjective. Like I said, it's kind of like pornography, like you kind of know it when you see it. <laughs> that went well, there was, there was a little, couple of little chuckles there, that was good. Um, but usability is more than that, it's, it's, it's really important and it, we need better metrics to measure it. So knowing how easy it is for people to use a product is a really big deal, and especially in open source, where usability is sometimes, I've noticed, uh, a little overlooked. There's a tendency for projects to prioritize functionality and technical details above all else, which is great. Don't get me wrong, those things are very important. But sometimes you, have, you don't get a box, and sometimes it can be difficult to understand what a product does how it does it, why it's important, all these why questions. And if people don't buy into that, they're gonna, they're gonna find something else. So even if a product works perfectly on a technical level, if users find it hard to navigate, it's like the success of the product's at risk. So it's important to address and identify any usability issues to ensure that a product's not only function, but are also user-friendly and enjoyable to use. Which brings me to the core qualities of what usability is. Um, before we jump into those, I want to just emphasize that this is actually research-based, it's not subjective. Um, and it's serious research, like people have looked into how we use technology, they've looked at what makes a product easy and enjoyable to use, and they've checked how fast people learn to use websites or apps, and how much they like doing it. So this research is really the foundation of what UX designers use. Um, it helps us figure out the best way to design products that fit smoothly into your life. We want them to not just be useful, but enjoyable to use. So thanks to these studies, we've pinpointed these five little puzzle pieces here. So there's learnability, how quickly can users understand the basics, efficiency, can users perform tasks quickly, memorability, how fast users can reacquaint themselves after a break from the product, errors, types, severity, recovery, these, and satisfaction, how much do they like the product. So using these principles in your design isn't just a way of ticking boxes, it's about making sure that stuff works well and it's actually enjoyable or at least not painful to use. So this gives you the guidelines to check and improve all sorts of digital things like websites, software, and interactive stuff, but how do we measure it? So there's actually a lot of ways. The gold standard would be hiring a UX designer who can do research, uh, A-B testing, user testing, testing, research, testing, research, until you have a product that's perfect and then you can ship it. It's great, perfect. But that doesn't really happen very often or ever. So um, I know budgets are tight, time is tight, and you need something that's fast and cost effective, and this is where usability heur heuristics can really come in handy. Uh, they're a great little shortcut for diagnosing and ultimately solving, hopefully, usability problems. So a heuristic is, uh, it's basically like a rule of thumb. It simplifies problem solving, and uh, this handsome fellow on your left is Jacob Nielsen. Uh, he's a renowned usability expert who introduced these guidelines in 1994, and they're for crafting user-friendly digital interfaces. The principles emerged from early internet research, and 
They were offering general rules to assess and enhance website software and interactive system usability. And they've stuck around. Like these have been around for 20 years now. Um, so they work. They're like a solid guide for designers and developers to create things that people find straightforward and friendly. And so now I'd like to break them down a little bit. Uh, so this is what they are, just an overview, but I will go into more detail. So starting off with usability of system status. Um, basically, the system should always tell users what's happening, and it should do it quickly. Like, if you click a button, it needs to tell you you've clicked a button. So you know that it's working within a reasonable time. Um, the progress bar is a good one. Um, you can see it on the screen there. Um, I actually have a camera at home that uh, I plug it in, and the, the light doesn't sw I have no idea if it's charging. It's, it's a pain in the ass. Um, so that's like, if I knew it was charged, like it's, I've gone out uh, thinking it's charged and it's not charged. And it's, it's just, it's very annoying. Um, and these sort of frustrations, I mean, sometimes users won't come back. Uh, heuristic number two, match between system and the real world. Your designers should talk like users do and they should act in a way that people expect them to act. Use words and phrases and concepts they know, not fancy jargon they might not understand. Um, this one's pretty simple and straightforward. Uh, buttons should look like buttons. A calendar should resemble a physical one. Not always, of course. Paradigms do shift slowly, but it helps users to understand and use things better. Um, don't, don't ever do a different cal calculator. This, is, this one's good. Change the colors, whatever, but that's it. We've solved it. That's a calculator. Okay, heuristic three, um, users are people, people make mistakes, so there should be an easy way out, like, like an emergency exit. If you mess up, you shouldn't have to go through a whole process to fix it. Um, how many times have you sent an email that you didn't mean to, or you send it out without the attachment that you explicitly said that you would attach, and that was the whole point of sending the email, and then you're like, oh, okay. Uh, there should be a backdoor for that. Um, so a lot of email accounts now offer you the option to undo. It's a little short. I'd like it to be a little longer, but it's, it's good and it's effective. And um, yeah, make sure you do that. Uh, so next we have consistency and standards. Keep things the same in your product. Uh, users shouldn't have to guess different words or actions and what they mean if they mean the same thing. So stick to how things are usually done in your industry as well. So industry and platform. So design system here is a good example of something within your system. But um, also, there's industry standards that people tacitly kind of agree on, like where the search bar should be or where the login button is. When I started as a designer, I always wanted to sort of reinvent things and be like, oh, put a search bar here. Don't do that. <laughs> Don't reinvent the wheel. The wheel, like the calculator, is perfect. Leave it as it is. Uh, error prevention. So fixing mistakes is good, but stopping them before they happen is better. Design should try to avoid things that might go wrong, or at least double check with users before they do something permanent. Uh, for the astute users, you'll notice I've chosen the Ryanair website, which is... Uh, Really bad, but this is one example. You'll see how the the destinations that you can't travel to from specific airports are blacked out or grayed out. Uh, that's good. So they did one good thing, and I thought I thought that worth mentioning, right? Uh, recognition rather than recall. Um, don't make users remember too much stuff. Show everything they need to do what's right there so they don't have to keep it all in their heads. Um, like, if you need info, you shouldn't have to hunt too much for it. It should be kind of right in front of you. Breadcrumbs are a good example. Um, as our recent searches in Google, as you can see here, that's how I wrote my talk. Um, <laughs> uh, so, one that I've noticed recently that's quite bad is uh, the LinkedIn QR code which is fantastic, but I can never remember where it is. It's in the search, and I can never remember that. Um, 
maybe fix that. <laughs> Just a suggestion. Uh, so flexibility and efficiency of use. Um, let's make things faster for the pros with shortcuts, but keep it simple enough for newbies. Um, so that way everyone gets what they need. What they need. What they need. Um, shortcuts, give them to me. We're all in a hurry now. Don't know what we're racing towards, but we want to get there fast. Uh, Figma does it. Most software does it. I've known Control Z since I was 12 years old. I'll never forget it. I wish I could use it in my day-to-day -day life more. <laughs> uh, aesthetic and minimalist design. So don't clutter your interfaces with stuff you hardly need. Too much info makes it harder to find the important stuff. Keep what you see focused on. Uh, keep what you see focused on what really matters. Um, it doesn't mean every design needs to look like a, a fancy hairdresser where there's just like a mirror and a hairdryer. And also not everything is so intuitive it can look like a Google search page. Um, but the point is you don't want to overload people with too much information. We can only take in so much information at once and the more we clog up an interface, the harder it is for us to do what we need to do. And, uh, sorry. What does a 404 error message mean? I still don't know. Um, why isn't it working? How do I fix it? Uh, when something bad happens, users need to know how they can fix it. Otherwise, I, I don't know. What, what, what am I going to do? Uh, the message should be easy to understand. No fancy codes like 404. It should clearly say what's up. And even better, give a helpful solution to fix it. So you just need to communicate that with them. Um, passwords are a good example. They'll tell you when something's wrong or incorrect and how you can fix it. And uh, finally, we have help and documentation. So the system should be easy to figure out without needing extra explanation. But just in case you do, there might be some docs to help you find how to fix it. Uh, I bought something recently and the whole experience was great except when it arrived and it wasn't working very well and I had to return it and I couldn't find any information on how to do that. It took me about a week and the great experience I had with the checkout was sort of dampened by the horrible helping experience I had. I'm sure we've had that experience as well with uh, delivery companies and whatnot. So, um, now we know what they are, what do we do with them? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> no, I do. Um, I want to be very clear that this isn't the be-all and end-all of usability. Uh, I'm not trying to talk my way out of a job or anything. Uh, but these are a really good building block for better usability. Um, they're great for testing things. Um, and the more we understand these heuristics, the better we're able to design interfaces that are better for users to use. Um, if you'd like to learn more about UX heuristics and how to apply them to your own products, my colleague Marit and I are doing a workshop in the other room. Um, so pop in and we can, we can do a UX audit on one of your products, uh, which should be fun. And we can learn more about heuristics. So um, thank you very much for listening to me ramble on. And uh, hopefully I've not spoken too long. Perfect. Uh, thank you. Awesome. Thanks, Chris. Uh, have we got any questions from the audience so far? Okay. Cool. Thanks. So, um, making it a little bit uh, more personal, uh, what is your a preferred usability testing method beside heuristic evaluation? Um, user research is probably the best one. Or um, if there's like a existing product I like to do testing, I'll isolate like a specific flow and test how users interact with it, test how they, where they make errors, whether they can do everything that they want to do and where frustration points are and things like that. 
that would be the gold standard. Um, also, just understanding which specific user set you're designing for, because often you'll have lots of different users wanting to do lots of different things. So an important thing to do is to narrow down which user specifically you're designing that for. Yeah. It's a great presentation. Thank you, Chris. Thank a you. question for you. Uh, I think on the second and third slide, you said make the experience memorable. Like that's an important factor. And then down much many slides later, you said don't make the user remember things. So I think there's a nuance there that can be unpacked. I'm curious about your thoughts there. Um, sorry, could you repeat the question so I can <laughs> think right. about it more? I do speak fast. I apologize. So. Early on, you said one of those principles that you had was make the experience memorable. Remember, like mm -hmm. you were talking about the metrics, and one of it was to make the experience memorable. Yep. And then further down, you said don't make your users remember things. There is a unique contradiction there that I'm curious about your take on, if that makes sense. So I think forcing a user to remember something is different to them remembering it. I suppose, like, let me, I'm going to need to unpack this. How much time do we have? <laughs> You've got two minutes. Um, <laughs> you see the habit of And further down, there was one concept in the 10 that you had, in the heuristics you had, mm -hmm. you said don't force your... Uh, so I think tr forcing someone to remember something is different to like having a memorable experience. <laughs> no, okay, so it's like uh, like the search feature, for instance. Like I, I I know where the search bar is. I don't have to remember where that is. Whereas the LinkedIn thing, I have to every time remember where that is. So it's it's to me it's unintuitive. Um, but it's an interesting question that I I I could mumble through now, but I'll give it some more thought. We won't connect after this for sure. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Any more questions? If not, I have one that maybe is a little spicy and controversial. Oh, my Lord. Um, <laughs> I'm heating up up here. <laughs> so in, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. My experience of some open source projects is that they swap out things like memorability and satisfaction for, but we're the only open source that does it. And we, you know, we're the best open source that does it. So we don't need to be a good usable product. There's sort of like, sometimes that's swapped out with like the mechanisms of like community around open source or even like the in-group kind of mm -hmm. vibes. Like how can we combat that as designers? Like how can we like say, yeah, but, also, these things. Um, look, it's tough. <laughs> sure. Obviously. Um, do you have any insight on this, Marit? Um, well, from my point of view, it's not only enough that we design um, as a community for an existing community, but from a societal point of view, we want to ensure that more users can adopt open source products. And so uh, good design helps to open the doors for more users to, to come in and not only convince those that are, only, are, all, are already convinced. So that's, from, from, from my perspective, that's a good argumentation for open source community to take care of uh, their designs, yeah.